Get started with the uh, second session of the afternoon session here. We have a big, big group of presenters that are going to tell us about their work on an international design project, aqueduct system for Biocito in Panama. So I know at least two of the presenters, but I let them uh, introduce themselves. Welcome to our presentation. As Ethan said, we were two groups um, for the International Senior Design Program that traveled to Panama. Our main goal was to survey the area to help them develop a new water system. We also developed two teams. So we are the Comisión de Agua Corriente. My name is Val. My name is Victor. I'm Lynn. And we're Agua de Abajo Engineering. I'm Taylor. I'm Erica. And I'm Krista. Today we'll be going over the site location to give you an idea of kind of where we were. Um, go into some community background information. Also talk about the existing system that they already have in place. Then go through our goals of our project and what we hope to accomplish. Um, we'll talk about specific aqueduct components. Then we'll split off into like our two different designs and then have some conclusions and questions at the end. So this is a general map of Panama. If the little out there, that's where we were. Um, Panama, we first traveled to Panama City, which is a little further to the right of the dock. It was about a 40 minute bus ride to a city called La Terrera. And once we got there, we got into something called a Chiva, which is like a pickup truck that's covered that uh, they can fit 20 to 30 people in there. Not nice, but um, <laughs> it's an experience. And then once we got to our destination, it was about another hour and a half hike um, into the community. So this is just a general image of the community of Biocito. Um, as you can see, all the homes are really centered around the river, which actually runs north in this community. The entire community is around seven kilometers long. This is the landscape of the area. As you can see, it's really hilly. There was a lot of mud, lots of streams. Um, it was hard. It was a pretty hard week. Um, got in shape, for sure. Okay. <laughs> um, it also rained a lot. We were there during the rainy season, which is about nine months out of the year. So lots of green vegetation around as well. So now for a little background on the community. Uh, the people there were Latino. It was a non-indigenous community. Uh, they spoke Spanish. It was close enough to what we learned here, so we could communicate with them pretty well. Uh, there was about 300 people that lived there, so it was broken up into about 70 households across the whole community. Uh, they settled there about 70 years ago, and shortly after established their school, which now goes up to about 8th or 9th grade. Uh, they also have a central town area, which is where we stayed. There's like a community building, a local store where they can get snacks and things, um, uh, and a church. They all lived in wooden huts, which like with um, thatch roofs and dirty floors and everything. Uh, and pretty much every house that we visited had a pit latrine, so that was nice. Uh, some of their leisure activities, they're really big into baseball. While we were there, we were actually fortunate enough to attend one of their tournaments, and our community actually won that tournament, so it was kind of fun. Um, they're really big into dancing and swimming in the river. That's really and then their local economy, they're all subsistence, subsistence farmers, so they grow all their own food, all the staples they need and everything. Uh, they can also go and work in Panama City or neighboring communities on construction projects. And then they can also help each other out on their farms as well as farmhands and earn about $5 a day or something for doing that. Uh, some of the things they grow are like coffee, bananas, oranges, rice, coconuts. Um, while we were there, we had a lot of rice and chicken. The community was um, very welcoming and cooked us dinner every night, so it was very good. There are existing aqueducts uh, in Vallecito. They were built by, by private households, and they serve usually one to two households, sometimes up to three. Uh, they're rather scattered, so they have a decentralized layout, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, and most of them are, them are unburied. You should be buried to protect them from the elements and from 
agricultural activity, but most of the reality is that most of them aren't, or if they are very shallow on uh, the surface. Uh, and so obviously that can cause problems with leaks and joints breaking, and animals stepping on lines even on our, on our last day of the communities a uh, piece of volunteer had her water go out, probably for one of those reasons. Uh, the sources are completely on private land, uh, including the source for the public facilities, and those sources are, are unprotected. They, they mostly are uh, they, they mostly are exposed to the runoff coming from the land, which can have fecal contamination, E. coli, uh, and also pesticides and fertilizers. And of course, households without taps must walk and carry to their sources or to a to a nearby aqueduct or far away. <coughs> And uh, we, we realized when we were down there that virtually no households practice treatment of any sort. They just they trust the water coming straight from the source, by which we found it that disagree. Okay, so here is the map of, uh, of the households in the community with the existing system. The existing systems are a little hard to read, uh, the black lines, but they're, they're obviously scattered around quite nicely. Uh, as you can see up there, yellow indicates acceptable service. That means running water going directly to taps and households. Uh, orange is improvements required. That can be anywhere from people uh, walking a short ways to their to their source or to their, to a tap. Uh, all the way to they have they have a, they might have a uh, existing tap, but if I can go away for that. And then brown is walking carry. As you can see, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of red. So improvements are needed. Uh, so, so our goal then, as both teams, is to design two separate water distribution systems, one for the southern half of the community, one for the northern half. Uh, and, and those would have a design very similar to those here in the states, right? We have we have a main a main line, a two-inch nominal diameter, uh, with service lines branching off them to people's houses. Uh, that would be a serve not only residents, but also public facilities. Uh, as we say here, centralized, decentralizing urban scattered water systems. Uh, one of our other goals is, is to evaluate new water sources instead of relying on old ones that may be threatened by uh, agricultural activity people wanting to develop their land. And of course, provide for water, provide water for people who, uh, who do not have taps in their, in their homes. It's very So there are really common features of aqueduct designs. These are common features for the design for a Bajo and for CDAC and for the other team that will present today. I'm going to walk you through the major components of a system so you kind of understand what's going on. To start out, we've got water coming out of the ground. This is our spring. This is our source of water for the entire line. Um, as you can see, the picture is over here. The source is unprotected. It's susceptible to surface water intrusion and bacteria and particles that would come in to there are obviously not things you want coming out of your tap. No one would be happy to see muddy water coming into their household. So to clean up this water and to protect it, we're designing spring boxes, which are pretty much concrete blocks or concrete boxes, which the water passes through rocks and sand to get into. So it's filtered, then it goes into the tank. The tank drains through a conduction line to the next step in our system, which will be inline chlorinators. The purpose of this is to disinfect the water, and this is a really big deal for our community. The Panamanian Health Department, MNSA, provides inline chlorinators and chlorine tablets. So this is something that Biocito really wants in their systems and is very common for Panamanian systems. From the inline chlorinator, the water will enter a storage tank. And the major purpose of a storage tank is to make sure there's enough water for the demand throughout the entire day. So here is an estimate of what the water demand might look like. So less usage in the morning and then keeps in or plus usage overnight and into the early morning, and peaks when people are getting ready to go out and do their day's work, and more peaks at dinner time. And we want to make sure there's enough water in the tank for the peaks. 
so that the water supply never runs out. From, oh, sorry. Another component is that the residence time and the storage tank helps with chlorination. We want to make sure that the water is disinfected before it gets to the houses, so it's ready to drink when it gets there. There's another key component of the storage tank. From the storage tank, the water will travel through dist distribution lines out to the community. The distribution lines are primarily two-inch PVC pipe, as Vicar had stated earlier. And the used lines will run and then branch off towards the actual houses. When the water is coming to the actual house, it will have to pass through a valve. We are including shutoff valves in our design because we have a water committee in the community who is hoping to set up a tax system to make sure that this water system is fiscally sustainable. They want to have a fund for maintenance in case things break and they need replacing, maybe to be able to pay someone to do regular routine maintenance. So if people aren't paying these bills, we need a way to shut off the water. That's where that valve comes in. But assuming that all is well and they are paying the bills that they need to pay, the water will come up that pipe and through the tap scan and out of the spigot right there. So people will then have running water into their houses and it'll be a lot easier and cleaner than if they had gathered from a surface water source. So now you have a basic idea of a general water distribution system. Now we're going to get into a little more detail of the specifics between our two projects. So as you can see where the red line is in the middle of the screen, that's right through the community center where we were staying. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, the river actually flows north through the community. So as an easy reference in the community, they refer to the north head, the me. The north end of the community as below for downriver, which is what Abajo means, and then Ariba is the upriver section. So Abajo Engineering surveyed and is designing for the downriver area, and the other team will be working on the upstream area. All right. So as we said earlier, we're the Comisión de Agua Corriente, and we Our goals for the project specifically is to create a water system that um, goes to all the households in our area. We also want to make sure there's an adequate amount of water going to like the town center because that's where the school's located and the church and lots of gatherings happen there. And lastly, we want to have uh, we want to see an implementation of like a water committee to make sure that the system is being maintained and to assure its longevity. So during the week that our team was in our little village in Panama, my team spent almost the entire time surveying with the water level. So the water level consists of a PVC pipe, as you can see me holding there, that's full of water. And there's a tube that runs out the bottom, and then the tube runs out the stick that Val's holding, and then there's a measure tape on the stick. So how do you survey with that thing? Well, you start by holding both the ends together, and you get a benchmark, so you read the water level. And then you move the PVC pipe with the water uphill and the stick with the measuring tape and the tube running up it downhill, and then the water will stay the same, so then you'll have the new water reading, which you can subtract from the benchmark and you have the elevation change. And we also took the distance between the stick and the PVC pipe every time, so we can have the elevation difference over the distance in the ground. And at every point we took compass readings, and we took GPS points when we needed. As you can see by that train there, that Surveying with water level was kind of difficult because we had to haul that thing around and sometimes you couldn't move that far. You can only move six meters maximum with it, but when there's steep elevation changes, sometimes you can only move a meter or two. So that process right there, we repeated it 666 times to survey our whole four kilometers. So when we got back to the United States, we put all of our data into it. Oh.
some low points in the system, and we know there's going to be high pressure and that sort of modeling. So we also had the GPS data, which we put into ArcGIS, so we could see approximately where we were. And we also put it into Google Earth. So the purple balloons, um, that's where we surveyed along. However, this red line right here was the proposed survey route that our Peace Corps volunteer made. So every day we just surveyed along where the local guides were macheting out the trail for us to survey. We surveyed along where they took us. So as you can see, it's a little bit different from where she proposed the system be. So if we do have problems with the system, we'll be able to move it up the hill a little bit more, which may take care of some of the pressure issues. So then taking our data, we put it into EP and Net to model the system so that we could figure out the pipe sizes we needed, the pressure is going to be okay. So right there, that's just our main system. There were going to be branches off the system, but we didn't have enough time to survey it all because it's kind of slow moving up a lot of level. So the system runs from the source all the way to the town center. The tank in the middle is about 15 cubic meters. It's not really in the middle. <laughs> and the system right now is modeled with two inch pipe, and it's 4,275 meters long, and that map shows the pressure, so there's going to be some low points on high pressure, and we're still looking at them. So as for future projects, we will be designing or redesigning these spring box for our system. We'll be completing EPA net with the system and also including water treatment, and then we'll be developing cost estimates and Okay, so now that you have some information about the CDAC project, which deals with the southern half of Biocito, I'm going to tell you something about the northern half of Biocito and we're Agua de Bajo Engineering, and we built a water or we're designing a water distribution system for the northern half of Biocito. Um, my name is Krista, and then my teammates are Erica and Taylor. Um, the goal of our project is to design a water distribution system that's gravity fed to the northern part of Viacito, Panama. And this, is, this will deal with about 10 houses and will serve approximately 44 people, which is about 15% of the community. So how we achieved our goal is we started by collecting data. So we went to Panama for two weeks and we collected surveyed data. Um, we collected elevation data using an apnea level. As you can see right here, this is what an apnea level looks like, and this is Erica and me in the back right there, um, surveying with an apnea level. So what it does is it measures the angle between two points, and then you can measure the distance with a tape measure, and you can develop an elevation profile that way. Also, we found locations by using a GPS to get XY coordinate data, and while we were there, we also did microbial studies to examine the contamination in our spring source, and we found Okay, so this is a map of our surveying data that we found with our GPS to show you the location of where we really surveyed in Biocito. Again, we're at the northern half. Um, I don't know if you can, well, up there. Can you point to that? No. Other one on the right. Right there is where our spring source is, and then we surveyed down this main line, and you can see some T's off the main line going to some of the houses that we're providing water to. And then, this is our elevation profile again that we developed using the APNE level survey. Um, the blue line represents our, all of our survey points on the main line, and then the gray line represents our pipeline and all the elevation for the pipeline goes. As you can, or, well, what's here also is you can see the colored dots represent T's that are going off to the separate houses in the system. And this side here and then the red dot up there represent rivers that we have to cross with our pipeline. Is it right here you can see that the pipeline doesn't all go all the way down to the river because we're going to be designing bridges to cross the river. One more thing to note is that the scales are different on the x and the y axis. Um, you can see that this scale is from 0 to 4,000 and this scale is from 200 to 300. So these changes in elevation aren't as drastic as they may seem even though from this point to this point is still 40 degrees slow, so it's still pretty slow. Okay. So right now we're trying to work out the problems that we've had so far. Uh, Krista touched on a few of them just now with the elevation profile. Uh, with the drastic changes in elevation, 
we're going to have some high pressure problems at the low points, and then a few houses at the end, we might have a pressure, or not enough head to reach those houses. So we're looking at alternate routes, possibly, or pressure break takes, things like that. Uh, Chris also mess, uh, mentioned the bridge crossings. So a picture up here is of one of the river crossings. Right now, that's just a PVC pipe held up with barbed wire. And with the changing water levels, those lines can get wiped out from the river. So instead, we are going to be designing a simple suspension bridge like this that will um, effectively hold the pipe high enough and supportive enough not to be broken. So the only problems we might have with that are coming up with the construction materials and poss um, possible difficult implementation of it with uh, the high slopes on either side of the river, these anchors might be kind of hard to build there. So. so our next future projects would be to finalize the design components that Taylor told you about, with the spring boxes and everything, uh, complete the EPA net model, and hopefully find a way around the pressure problems that we're having, and give a cost estimate and schedule for our project. So that's it for the BACO. So to conclude, the Biasito way of life, their traditional Latino um, American farming community, they had an existing system, however, it's not really meeting the needs of the community. So we're attempting to design a new system in order to assure not only that it's clean, but it's an adequate and reliable um, source, and especially for residential use in public facilities like the school. And it must be practical to construct and community must be willing to maintain it. So, you, these are our references. And do you have any questions? Thank you for coming. Let's take a few questions. Do you have any questions for the students working on the place? Can you say it? Can you already back? So I'm wondering about when you have undulating pipe, one of the issues with gravity distribution systems is that are the airlocks. So you get air in the pipe and locks the flow. Is there are you considering that and, and having some workarounds to two components that we didn't mention in our presentation are the pressure brake tanks and the air release valves. So you're absolutely right where the undulating topography goes down like that, the pressures get so high that they can break the pipes, which is obviously a problem if you're getting trying to get water down the pipe. And then, yeah, the air blockages happen up here. We need to look into air release valves. It's a pretty typical component for projects in these areas, but we haven't done any research on them. We're not quite that far in our design. Just from our side of the coin, uh, you could probably tell by our profile we were having greatest risk of that near the end. Uh, there's, there's a massive hill near the end of the project. That's, that's actually why we had to use water level rather than the abbey level so that we could, it was very slow but a bit more accurate. Um, but the problem is we may also have to adjust the route zone just as the other team may have to uh, and not, and possibly not serve those houses near the end with water coming right into their houses. So, we may have to adjust our hair.